The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Welcome back to the Electronics Inside, the show where we tear down toys, tools, and appliances just to find out what's inside. I'm David, and in this episode, we're going to be looking at a range of electrical protection systems. Okay, so eventually in this teardown, we're going to be going through a bit of a history of electrical protection devices. Uh, got a couple of fuses and a couple of more modern devices going from an MCB up to an AFDD. We're going to come back to that because there's one little experiment that pretty much everyone should be able to try at home, which I don't think I've done since I was about 13 years old, which I thought, why not? We'll do it. Okay, to join in with this little experiment, you will need a 9 volt battery and some wire wool. It's uh, reasonably simple and just gives a really nice visual indication of what fuses do. Uh, and the basic principle is that the physical cross section of a conductor is what gives it its current carrying capacity. If your conductor is too small, it's going to get hot and overheat and eventually melt. Now, that's what you do with a fuse, and that's where most electrical protection started. And with your 9 volt battery and just a little tiny tuft of uh, wire wool, you can start finding contacts and burning it. You get the point. It's reasonably safe. Have a play. Don't burn your house down. Don't burn your fingers. It gets hot, obviously. Now that technique of a fusible link, which gets hot when the current is too high, it melts and opens the circuit, has been used for a very long time in a surprising amount of applications. What I have here is a BS3036 fuse, which is the UK standard for them. But of course, I'm sure everywhere around the world at some point used rewirable fuses. So this would fit within your distribution board, consumer unit, whatever it was. And this little cartridge was rewirable. You can see the little colored dot corresponds with the base. So you know to put a 15 amp, in this case, fuse in there. And it's really simple. Hopefully you can see just in here, you've got a little ceramic holder and inside a tiny little piece of fusible wire. And that is, that's it. That fusible wire just burns when you, your circuit is uh, pulling too much current and it melts. I'm told that experienced people could tell you the difference between a fault current and overcurrent. So if this is a 15 amp circuit and it was pulling 16 amps. I'm told that the wire melts and sort of each end separates in the middle and you get a little bit with like a little melted ball on each end. Whereas if it was a fault current and say this would experience 100 amp plus, now that little filament basically vaporizes and you just get this copper deposits on the inside of the ceramic holder. And yeah, it's quite common to still see these in use. And it's, a, it's kind of a weird thing because invariably on top of the distribution board or consumer unit or fuse board, there's always these little cardboard spools of uh, fuse wire at various different ratings. Just in case one blows, you don't have to go down the shops and get another one. You've got a load of wire there ready to rewire your own fuses, which is always interesting because I really don't know how you'd go about that in the dark. And that is a 15 amp wire. So that will fuse at almost exactly 15 amps. So move on sometime and not very long and you start to get sealed fuses. Now these two they actually came as a three, obviously for three phase power, are 100 amp HRC fuses. Again, I would call them BS88 fuses for the British standard, but again, these are international, you'll find these all over. And in here, you have your fusible link, but 100 amp is significantly different to our 15 amp filament. So what I've done, and I had to do this off camera because it took ages, I have actually cut one open so we can see inside it. So in here, you've got the copper bars to bolt down to the switch fuse or, or whatever you're, you're protecting. And in here, you can see these filaments. Now they are enormous. They're more like copper tape with little fusible sections in them and they sit within this ceramic enclosure. HRC, which is high rupture current fuses. So that basically means that in the event that one of these carries its fault capacity, which could be up to, and I can't remember what the spec is exactly. This one's an 80 kiloamp, so 80,000 amp rupture current. So these will physically be safe and won't explode or show shrapnel all over the insides of your fuse board 
up to 80,000 amps of fault current. Now you can also see that to help sort of absorb that energy and also to prevent arcing within the structure of the fuse, there's kind of this sand, and it's silica sand to prevent arcing. You excuse the fact that there's bits of dirt in here that was a consequence of me breaking this open and it all falling out and I had to sort of scoop it back in. But there you get a really nice clear view of what the BS88 cartridge fuse looks like. The thing that I find particularly interesting about these cartridge fuses types, you can actually get ones with little indicators. So often they're in a square body, but have a little kind of window at the front. Um, and it's an element which dyes the sand in a different color when the fuse is ruptured. So you don't have to sort of whip it out, test it. You can see from a little colored dot, it's either red or not, you know it's tripped. Great little inventions. But of course, these still are very high current and only protect you from overcurrent. Yes, this is going to protect you from overcurrent as well as fault current, but that's all they can do. So it's time developed again, you start to see the need for other methods of electrical protection. That's where we start getting into the more advanced stuff. So the next method of uh, protection we're going to look at is a miniature circuit breaker. Now, if you're wondering why it's called a miniature circuit breaker or MCB, that's because they come from molded case circuit breakers, which are the big industrial type. And they tend to start around this kind of size, 63 amp, uh, probably the smallest size you'd get. Uh, more modern ones come with uh, tunable settings uh, and you can make them fit the application. You don't have to just select the closest one to whatever you're protecting. They, the modern ones are also starting to get some real intelligence on them. Sometimes you could even accuse them of being IoT based. So uh, certain manufacturers are adding Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, Ethernet connectivity or Modbus linking back to major circuit breakers or ACCBs typically. Uh, an ACCB is an air circuit breaker. If you've ever seen the original Jurassic Park where uh, Ellie's in the tunnel um, trying to get the power back onto the park and she has to pump that lever and then there's a button that says push to close, that's an air circuit breaker and they use pre-charged air to uh, actuate the, the disconnect mechanism and that's to make sure you don't get excessive arcing when the contacts are close which is kind of an issue with all sorts of switching mechanisms I'm sure we're going to see that within here um, and I remember when I worked on my first like big industrial site and the main incoming breaker I think was uh, a thousand amp air circuit breaker and I was allowed to actually pump it and press the push to close button I was so excited to find out it was a real thing and not Hollywood creation. Anyway, big circuit breakers spawned miniature circuit breakers. Now this particular one is uh, just a miniature circuit breaker. This will do nothing more than trip the, uh, stop the live. And this is a single pole. You can get dual pole that switch to neutral or three phase and neutral. And this one is purely a single pole miniature circuit breaker. Now this will protect you in two different ways. Thermally, so that will protect you from overcurrent and magnetically, which will protect you from fault current. And we'll get into a bit more about that. But the other key characteristic I kind of wanted to point out here is the fact this is a B32 circuit breaker. Now the B is characteristic of how much inrush current this can handle before it trips. So things like motors, fans, they have a higher inrush current and they need a different characteristic, something like a C or even a D circuit breaker. However, things like lights, general sockets, you'd put those on a B. If there was something that was really resistive, had no inrush current at all, you might get away with putting an A in. An A, typically quite uncommon. Now the other thing about circuit breakers is all of these are secondhand and used. I wouldn't recommend using secondhand equipment and this, these are going to be destructively taken apart. Once you've tampered with it, played with it, messed with it, taken it apart, in my case, I would not recommend using them again. So this is kind of a destructive to be safe tear down and uh, because these are largely pop riveted closed or pressed riveted closed I get to be destructive with the opening. Toys. I did actually debate doing this beforehand off camera but I kind of thought where's the fun in that? Now I suspect there's going to be lots of springs and horrible things in here designed to catch me out so we are going to have to be careful as I take these apart just make sure I'm not going to get lose half the content. Oh, that's cool. Right, so with this arm, you can see the connection path. It's quite significant. 
<laughs> it goes phase feed, the live wire, the hot wire as you would call it in the States, comes in the bottom, comes up here through this little flexible lead, and this is the connection point. Okay, but this section up here, it, this coil obviously is going to become an electromagnet. So if you pull a very high power fault current, so sort of this was uh, 32 amps, so if this went up to let's say 100 amps, then the characteristics of the magnetic field would shoot a little pin out the bottom here and push this little arm down, which trips the breaker. You can see the pin coming out there. And that does that with a lot of force at high current. But if this is just pulling maybe 33, 34, 35 amps, rather than that electromagnet being fired, you actually end up in a position where it's thermally tripped. Okay, so this little section down here is actually a bimetallic strip. And with that, armed you can see that as that might expand it will push against the spring and trip it again so there's your disconnect you see the terminals are actually slightly tinned where it touches that's to make sure they make good contact and don't arc as much as they would if they were raw copper so you've got an electromagnet and a uh, bimetallic strip to try and um, disconnect it in two different ways and the fault the tripping characteristic of this on a graph is actually an interesting kind of double shape and you can work out the disconnect time based on the fault current uh, and you, you know you are talking milliseconds normally depending on the, the fault type but the magnetic is quicker at tripping at high currents the thermal is better at tripping at low currents but depending on which mechanism is activated depends on how long it's going to take so again all this is going to do is switch the live conductor or the phase conductor depending on overcurrent conditions. So moving on from a miniature circuit breaker, the next device I have to show is an RCBO, which is residual current with overbreaker, overcurrent breaker, RCBO. In the UK, that's what we call a device that combines the features of an RCD, residual current device, with a miniature circuit breaker. So this will break on ground faults or GFI, as I think they're known in the States but it will also stop on overcurrents. So again, you've got that characteristic of a B32. So that's the inrush current, 32 amps, nominal current, 30 milliamp. Now 30 milliamp is the maximum allowed of current to leak out of another path before this will trip. So let me explain. Rather than just tripping when there's too much current being pulled by the circuit to protect the wiring, this is now looking to protect people specifically. So this measures, you see it's got this additional wire in here, and actually through here you wire live and neutral, or phase and neutral, or hot and ground, depending on the current you're in. And it basically uses uh, magnets to physically measure how much current's going out and how much current's coming back. Now, if somewhere out on the field there is current that is leaking down to earth through a faulty appliance, through a pipe, through, through what you really don't hope, through a person, this knows that there's a difference between the current going out and the current coming back, and it trips. Now, that's a clever technique, but again, it's still electromechanical. So again, let's get the uh, big boy toys out and open it up. Okay, so now we've got the cover off the RCBO. Hopefully, you can already see some familiar parts. So if I put this next to the miniature circuit breaker, the RCBO, it's got the magnetic trip and the thermal trip almost exactly the same. However, it introduces these coils and these electromagnets down here. And I have to admit, I didn't actually know they actually have some passive electronics in there. It doesn't surprise me too much, but I didn't, I didn't know. So all of this mechanism essentially works in the same way, where you've got the thermal trip, the electromagnetic trip. That's protecting you from overcurrent circuits again. So that's protecting you from the wiring in your house essentially catching fire. This bit down here, these additions, they are connected to the live and the neutral, the phase and the neutral, and they go through these, this electromagnet. And this is now another method of tripping this little shunt. And when that electromagnet is balanced, so the current going out is the same as the current coming back, it won't actuate. But when the balance reaches 30 milliamps of difference in current, that then actuates and trips the mechanism. Trouble is when I took the cover off, a lot of stuff came out and I now am struggling to work out how that works. So on this little circuit board, we've got unfortunately the windings to the um, electromagnets, capacitor, a couple of induct, a transistor, a couple of inductors, M54128L. 
guess that's an op amp. We'll check it out afterwards. But yeah, they're using, I, I, I thought the test button, which you can use to test the function of the uh, ground fault function or the residual current function. Uh, and it just throws a little bit of imbalance in there. I hadn't realized that was actuated electronically. You see up here, this pin through this resistor actually trips that circuit. See, even I'm learning stuff today. So we've gone from fuses, better fuses, resettable mechanisms to personnel protective mechanisms. And now we get to something even more impressive, arc fault detection. Now this combines 32, B32, so it's gonna have all the mechanism and MCB, but 32, 30 milliamp, so it's also gonna have the RCBO or the RCD or the ground fault isolation element to it. But this also listens to the harmonics on the electrical circuit and apparently an arcing wire within your system will have a very characteristic frequency to it. And I understand that's around 100 kilohertz for an arcing wire. And apparently this device will listen to it and trip the circuit when it sees that out in the field. So we've got all the clips here, which look like they hold the case into three parts. So you've got a left case, a right case, and a center molding. But you've also got the same on this side, like it's two separate halves, which is possible because this little device here is uh, like a shunt, shunt trip. So you can actually get MCBs banked up that will tr trip each other. And you have these little prongs which go between them and trip each other. So there's little bus bar links between each side. So what's the advantage of that? Oh, is this just a 32 amp RCBO that gets bolted onto an electronics part to make it an AFD? <laughs> There you go, you see as an example, that shunt trip ability is actuated by this little pin. So I'm expecting whatever's in here as the arc fault detection unit. All it's going to do is actually just turn that little key 90 degrees and that trips this unit in just the same way we were doing this. Now I've got to be honest, compared to these, this feels very light, like there's not a lot in it. Don't get me wrong, there's still enough condu of conductor in there to handle the mains voltage and up to 32 amp because that's where the safety current limit would be. Come on. Don't do that. Okay, I, again, I'm sorry I lost all the little bits. So again, we've got a little solenoid which activates the tripping. Now this little pin here was the one that went through to the adjacent RCBO and tripped it and it went just through there. Okay, that's a CT. And you see the live or the phase runs through here on the ceramic coated but rigid wire through here. Now that I suggest is a current transmitter or a CT. Now that's just a really big winding uh, around a ferrite core. And that will be sending very, very high voltage but very low current information to be read and there's a couple of um, active components on here and I'm guessing that um, this will be using that CT to watch the current formations going through that live conductor and then again you've got a little trip button on the front this little tack switch and all of this will just be watching harmonics so CTs are often used for metering so you don't want to Actually, the most common place you guys will probably know a CT from is the clamps on a multimeter. So the clamp on non-contact current readings are doing exactly the same thing as a CT. They're measuring the magnetic field run that's generated by the current running through the wire. But you can actually pick up the harmonics from that as well. It's not just the amount of current, you can get very high frequency harmonics. And I understand that when this sees 100, hertz, 100 kilohertz arcing, uh, harmonics on here, it will use the electromagnet just to trip the shunt, which then trips the RCBO. I'm actually really surprised at just how much electronics is on board here. Now, I hadn't realized that RCBOs or ground fault isolators use circuit boards at all. I always thought they were electromechanical with uh, magnetic. Now, they obviously use a magnet to shunt, uh, to trip, and they obviously use a magnetic field for measuring the current. I just hadn't expected there to be active circuitry in there performing these tasks. Now the arc fault detector, 
I knew was going to be something, but I hadn't realised how cool that little board was going to be. The fact that it's got the CT and all the components on board just to activate that little electromagnet to sh shunt trip an external device, which is cool because you could put this on another device or use it for another application. I don't think I'm quite brave enough to power this up with 230 volts and actually try and reverse engineer it. We'll see if we can find some um, debug headers on there, although there are some conspicuous test pins on there. But yeah, that's that's super cool. I thought this would be an interesting little teardown. I know it's not our normal type device, but I thought it'd be interesting for something that every I can guarantee everybody is at least exposed to in their daily lives, whether they know it or not, to have a look at some of the more mundane electronics around us. And as it turns out, I think they're not too mundane. I mean, these are... These save thousands of lives every day. I mean, I don't even think our medical device that we took apart can have that claim. I hope you found it interesting. If you've got a suggestion for a teardown you'd like to see, head over to the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash the electronics inside. Let us know what you think, have your say. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Yeah, that, that I see, that, that I see right there, I thought was maybe an op amp. Mm, no. Turns out that is a dedicated chip from Mitsubishi that is an earth leakage current detector. Kind of takes all the magic out of it, doesn't it? <laughs>